Hi guys, this is Vivek and today I'd like to talk to you about um, wireless flash triggers and how you can use them at your home um, because um, having your flash wireless just gives you different possibilities uh, makes your photos look so much nicer um, the ones that I have here in my hand uh, this is a, um, a handle Combi FT um, this is a Chinese brand um, uh, it won't cost you a lot. Uh, these ones you can buy them for about um, eighty dollars, I think. And if you buy them separate, they cost you around forty dollars each. Um, this one here is a trigger, and this one here is a receiver. And over here, I already have um, one of the. Mm, I have a flash already mounted on one of the receivers here, and you can see it is um, blinking from time to time, and it shows that it's um, ready to receive signal. Well, the reason why um, you need to buy one of these is because you can make a flash wireless like um, what I've done here. You don't have to mount it on your camera all the time. Um, and like, if you, if you um, initially when you're starting off photography, you generally tend to use your flash from your camera body, and um, which makes uh, like this is the general trend. And once you've uh, taken heaps of photos from, with the flash on your camera body, um, you sort of get uh, bored with the type of photos that come out. And so um, you want um, to um, explore different um, horizons. <laughs> and um, well, this is how you can do it, how you can explore different horizons by uh, taking your flash off your camera, putting it on a stand, um, you can have one of your friends help you out to hold the flash if you don't have a stand but you can buy one of these Chinese brands one for like $30 I think um, and so place uh, your mm, uh, flash off your camera like this at an angle and photos that come out um, when you have your uh, flash off your camera is uh, totally different um, your uh, structure of your face uh, gets more defined because um, um, uh, it creates more dramatic shadows and um, the photo is more flattering and uh, more interesting uh, and, and very natural uh, because that's generally how people see your face um, they have shadows but the flash when the flash hits your face uh, when it's mounted on the camera it's very flat and it's not very pleasing um, so um, I'll show you guys how you uh, use them. Um, so over here, so um, the trigger and the flash, sorry, the trigger and the um, receiver. Um, I'll show you what the receiver is. Um, it has the um, metal mount for your flash, and this one is for a Canon. Um, this is not mine. This I borrowed it from my friend, and he is he is a Canon user. But I can use this on my Nikon as well. Um, because they are not TTL, only there's like um, five pins in there, but only one of the pins work, and the rest of the pins is for your TTL purpose, and um, it doesn't work. Um, that is why they are, they are cheap as well. Uh, so just the flash works, uh, the TTL doesn't work. Um, so mm, that is your uh, mount for <coughs> that is your um, what do you call it grip for your um, tripod. So you um, slide it into the tripod, uh, and then that's a lock. Um, and it takes uh, two AAA batteries. Um, it takes two AAA batteries, and inside there is um, and the channels. It has um, this one has four channels. You can set up um, in each channel. You can set up different flashes to do um, different things um, to work in different power at different timing. Um, it also has on and off switch over here. Um, so that's it for and it also has a PC sync port. Um, this PC sync port um, comes with a cable that goes into your camera and that is for um, making your um, receiver into a, a flash uh, sorry a camera trigger. I'll talk about that uh, in a bit later, um, but first uh, let's talk about um, the trigger itself. Um, so that's the trigger, that's a metal um, grip, and it has five pins. But one of just the uh, one, the, this, the one in the front works. The rest don't work. Um, 
so you can use them on a Canon or a Nikon camera. Um, when my friend bought this, um, he went to buy the second trigger and they actually gave him a Nikon version and we went to return it saying that you gave us a Nikon version and he uses a Canon but the seller said it um, doesn't matter and they work for both. So. Um, and this um, doesn't have on and off switch, this one has a timer, so 4 seconds timer. I'll tell you why, why you have a timer here. Um, and the other one, I don't know what it is, I think it's for normal photo, take normal photos. Um, um, okay, uh, it takes um, one of those um, flat batteries that go in your wristwatch, but the bigger ones. Um, and this one also has a 4 channel um, system inside. So uh, you have to, uh, you can select any of the channels, uh, but if this is on channel 1, and this should also be in channel 1. And, and sorry, this 4 second timer is, uh, okay, uh, um, so use that, that was how you use these um, as a wireless flash trigger. So you mount the trigger on your camera body. Um, and then you mount your um, receiver on your, um, so you mount the flash on your receiver, sorry, and um, it has a test button up here, so you can see that it's already flashing red, but if I press the test button halfway down, um, it becomes green, so it's saying that it's receiving the signal, so, and if you have the flash on, like this is and um, get the pilot ready. So you can see that I'm actually using a Canon flash, and I have a Nikon body. Um, so um, there you go. Um, who said you cannot use a Canon flash and Nikon body? Uh, you can, but um, yeah. Um, Please don't ask me why, um, I don't have a Nikon flash at the moment. Um, this was my own old Canon flash and um, I had to go and do a photo shoot for uh, a nightclub uh, for a party last night and I used this set setup. Um, it did work, um, but because the second curtain doesn't work, um, because they're different brands, um, I had a really hard time. Um, so there you go, if you're doing it professionally, um, I recommend you not to do it, but um, other than that, it still worked, um, it saved my life, um, I didn't have a flash and I just by using one of these um, wireless triggers, I could use um, my Canon flash with the Nikon body and I still got some decent photos, um, I'm, I'm not totally unhappy, but um, you know, um, you, I didn't get 100% out of it. Um, and now to use this as um, and the other thing what you can do with these is you can use it as a trigger for your camera. Yeah, you heard me right. I, you can use this as a trigger for your camera. What you do is um, you slide that in and um, you slide the receiver in the body and then you have your trigger um, to trigger the camera. And what you have to do is take a the, take the PCC cord and then plug it in uh, into your um, the camera um, cable um, release port and once you've plugged it in uh, you can use this to f fire a camera um, from um, uh, from distance um, and so um, yeah that's pretty much um, all about uh, wireless triggers um, like I said uh, it's for only for hobbyists um, don't use it for professional photo shoots um, unless um, you know you can't really afford an uh, expensive one to start off with and um, you want to use a cheap one. Oh, I just remembered, um, so, um, so before I um, go away, um, I'd just like to tell you something about um, these. Um, uh, one thing to remember is um, uh, how many times um, the flash actually triggers when you press the shutter button. So, if I have this mounted on a camera like this, um, say if if I had to press the 
shutter button five times, the flash should actually go, go off five times. Or if I had to press ten times, the flash should actually go off ten times. But sometimes that doesn't happen. Um, and that one is called um, a misfiring. Um, so what actually happens is, um, if you press the button ten times, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this time it didn't misfire. Um, last night when I was uh, shooting at the nightclub, uh, in the nightclub, um, it might misfire a lot of times. I think it's because of um, the disturbance of, in the frequency in, uh, in the club. But um, it did misfire. Um, I had a lot of problems regarding that as well. Um, but generally, in, um, in a controlled environment where you don't have um, a lot of electronics, you can um, um, you don't have a lot of electronics switched on. Uh, you can um, use this um, without any issues, I think. And um, I did see, like, I haven't done a field uh, test on this, like, um, like a distance test. And um, uh, but I have seen video re reviews of people where they have successfully tested these for up to um, 140 feet. So that's pretty good. Like, I don't think you would ever uh, need to use uh, flash triggers. I don't know, from 140 feet away. Um, so, you know, to work, work in a studio, they're, they're fine. Um, um, and another thing you got to remember is um, the sync speed um, while using these with your camera. So, um, you want to set your, your sync speed of your camera and your flash to your, your recommended um, um, uh, speed like this this one I have tested up to um, one by two hundred of a second um, and uh, up to one by two hundred of a second I had no problems I went to up to two uh, I think two fifty was next stop one stop up three twenty uh, and um, I had um, on, um, like half the frame exposed and half the frame not exposed so it didn't sync. Um, but I know uh, some Canon bodies will sync up to um, uh, 320 of a second, and I think the D3X, D3S, um, 1Ds, they sync. They have a higher sync speed. So um, just uh, be careful uh, with your sync speed um, when you're setting this up. Um, uh, other than that, um, they work perfectly fine. Um, you should buy them. Um, I, I do recommend that you should have one of them and um, do do play around with them. And well, pretty, that's pretty much uh, for uh, wireless flash triggers. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video, and um, you guys keep shooting.